Welcome to the Harrison Podcast Series. The title of this podcast is Interpretation of Right Heart Catheterizations, Pressures. The learning objective for this podcast is to understand the basics of a right heart catheterization and to know the normal values for the measurements obtained. Okay, so on the video, what you've seen is the tip of the swan gans catheter pass from its initial place in the superior vena cava down into the right atrium. And what you do as you do this at the bedside or in the cath lab is you watch the waveforms and watch for the change in waveforms for each chamber that you go through during the right heart catheterization that will tell you where the tip of the swan gans catheter is. So when we talk about the right atrial waveform, it's very similar to the jugular venous waveform. What you'll see looks like this. So there's two parts for each cardiac cycle. So there's the A wave, there's the V wave, there's the X descent, there's the Y descent, and this is C. So let's talk about these different parts. So the A wave is atrial contraction. So if you're watching this on the ECG, you'll see that at the time of the P wave. So the V wave, the V wave is similarly ventricular contraction. All right. So the C wave is going to be closure of the tricuspid valve. So what happens when the tricuspid valve closes, it causes a reverberation of pressure, which is measured as an increase of this C wave here during the X descent. So let's talk about the descents. So there's the X descent, which is atrial relaxation. So that's the relax relaxation of the atria following atrial systole. And then there's the Y descent, which is basically ventricular diastole, or opening of the tricuspid valve and filling of the right ventricle. Okay, so look at this waveform, and certainly remember that this is one cardiac cycle, so when you see this during a procedure, this is going to be much more compact than what you're seeing it look like right now. The other things that you should know are that the mean pressure for the RA, depending on where you look, should be somewhere on the order of 2 to 6 millimeters of mercury. Okay, and also remember that this is also be referred to as the right sided filling pressure. You often people talk about right and left sided filling pressure, so this is the right sided filling pressure. All right, remember that the number you're looking for is 2 to 6. Above that would be elevated right sided filling pressure. All right, so remember A wave, V wave, X descent, Y descent, and C is the closure of the tricuspid valve. All right, we'll move on. You're in the cath lab, you'll see under fluoro, if you do it under fluoro, the tip of the catheter move from the right atrium to the right ventricle, and you'll see the corresponding pressure waveform change. However, if you're doing this at the bedside, such as in the CCU, all you'll have to go by is the pressure changes. And so it's important to know what to look for to know when you're from the right ventricle, right atrium to the right ventricle. So we talked about the right atrial waveform. It's got the two-part waveform. So if you remember, it looks like this with the C wave and the A and the V. Okay. So that's what the right atrium looks like. So as you pass the catheter, what you'll look for is the waveform to change. And what you're going to see is you're going to see the systolic pressure get a lot higher and the diastolic pressure will stay fairly similar. So as it goes along, what you're going to see is you see the right atrial waveform, the A and the V, and then all of a sudden you get much higher and much lower waveform. And again, I'm no artist, but you get the idea. With the systolic pressure up here and the diastolic pressure down here. So this is right ventricle. Okay? 
So uh, again, depending on kind of what you you read, your numbers top and bottom should be something along the lines of 15 to 25 millimeters of mercury over 0 to 8 millimeters of mercury. And that would be normal RV pressure. So if you remember from our last drawing, the right ventricular waveforms are going to be these broad, upsloping, higher, di higher systolic pressure and uh, essentially very little diastolic pressure. Remember we said that the systolic is going to be 15 to 25 and that the diastolic is going to be something like 0 to 8. And so what you're going to see is you're going to see this diastolic pressure jump up on you when you go from the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery. So just to illustrate that, you're going to be watching the monitor and you're going to see this ventricular waveform and then all of a sudden when you cross the pulmonary artery you're going to see that diastolic pressure come up and then you're also going to see the dichrotic notch in your waveform as well. Okay, and the pressure you're looking for here is something like 15 to 25 with a systolic something 8 to 15 with a mean pressure of 10 to 20. And remember, this is the pulmonary artery. Okay, so just to review, you'll see these broad up and down ventricular waveforms and then you see the diastolic portion jump up higher and you see a even more arterial looking waveform with a dichrotic notch and that's when you know you're in the pulmonary artery. Okay, so the last pressure waveform that we're going to get measurements on with our Swan-Gans catheter is going to be the pulmonary artery wedge pressure which gives us an estimate of the left atrial pressure. What you see on the fluoroscopy video is the balloon tipped edge of the tip of the swan advances into the pulmonary artery until it ceases to be freely mobile within the pulmonary artery or it's wedged. And what this does is create a static column of blood between that wedged balloon and the left atrium and therefore the pressure transducer on the tip of the swan catheter is able to measure the pressure waveform in the left atrium. And so the left atrial pressure waveform is similar in appearance to the right atrial waveform that we've already reviewed in depth so we won't spend all the time going through all the different pieces of it on this one. But so what you want to watch for is if you remember what our pulmonary artery waveform looks like, or we said it's kind of arterial in nature with the dichrotic notch with a systolic something 15 to 25 and a diastolic something around 8 to 15. Okay, And so as you continue to advance the catheter what you'll see is it'll kind of flatten out and you'll see more of an atrial appearing waveform with the two-part component, the A and the V wave. So as you continue to advance here, what you would see is this would go then into the A, C, V, A, C, V, A, C, V, okay? And that's going to be your wedge. And what you'll see is this will have some respiratory variation up and down. Um, but that will give you an estimate of the left atrial pressure. Um, so this is the pulmonary artery wedge pressure. And what we're probably looking for is something on the order of 6 to 12 millimeters of mercury. Okay. Um, also know that the wedge pressure can also be thought of as being the left-sided filling pressure. So when we talk about left and right sided filling pressures, the pulmonary artery wedge pressure is the left sided filling pressure, whereas the right atrial pressure, or the CVP, um, would be the right sided filling pressure. 